97% of women are going to be with just 3% of men and things are going to be really hard for you Muslim men when it comes to marriage. This was said in a video that was shared with me recently and I really wanted to comment on it and get into how true or untrue it really is. I think this is a prime example to show you why taking dynamics, concepts, ideas from non-Muslims and applying that to Muslim dynamics is a big mistake and it leads to people getting the wrong idea, the wrong picture of how the reality of the Muslim community is. And also I want to give hope to the Muslims out there, to the Muslim men who are looking to get married in the next few years because it's not as bad as you've been told. Some people are making a lot of negative videos or negative comments about marriage, about how women are these days and it's not absolutely true. So let's get into it. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Amin by the way and I wrote the book on Islamic masculinity alhamdulillah. So let's get right into this video and what was said in the video. Okay, so the first point that I want to talk about in this video is the concept of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule or 97% of women going after 3% of men. This, I, I understand how it could be possible with non-Muslims because how do non-Muslims operate? They're not purely working in a marriage basis. So one man, he could be with 10 plus women a year, right? He could even be with say five women in one month, so, right? So five times 12, 60. He could be with 60 women a year. So the 1 to 97 ratio or the 3 to 97 ratio, you can understand how that's possible when you have people living in that relationship dynamic where they're just kind of using, abusing women, being with women for one day, one week, one hour, and then leaving them, moving on to the next one. You can see how that's possible. But with Muslims, it's just not true. We don't operate like that. The top tier, if you like, of men, and we'll get into what that even means, the top tier of Muslim men, they're not getting with two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten women every month. They're not doing that. What top tier Muslim men are doing, they're marrying one woman and they might just stay with her for their whole life. Or they might divorce that woman, like divorce is quite common, right? But then they'll marry another one. So maximum, they're going to end up with two, three women in their whole lifetime. They're not going to end up being with 10, 20, 30 women in their lifetime because we do marriage. We do commitment. And there is a barrier to getting married, the mahar, the, the social element of it where families get together, families are connected and everything. And so we're just not going to be going and getting involved with that many women. So how can we have the Pareto principle apply to Muslim marriage when Muslim men don't have that kind of turnover of women that the non-Muslims have? So it's very clear here that the dynamic of non-Muslims cannot apply to Muslims. Muslim men are looking to get married, find a good wife, have kids with her and kind of get on with his life. He's got his wife, he's got that area of his life sorted and now he's going to look towards his business, his career, his talab uh, al-ilm, his memorizing Quran, whatever it is. So he's not going to marry one woman and then seek another and another and another or leave that woman and then go get another and it's just not the dynamics. And the second point that really didn't translate from non-Muslims to Muslims is what kind of things women are looking for in men. So when he talks about top tier men, when it comes to the non-Muslims, yeah, we might be talking about having loads of money, being uh, having certain status, having a certain physique. But this is not typically what Muslim women look for. And when I say Muslim women, I mean the good Muslim women that you and I might want to marry. Not any old women who are really following the same standards as the West, having these superficial things that they're looking for in a man. We're talking about Muslim, good Muslim women. What are they looking for? So if the non-Muslim women consider the top tier man to have loads of money, to have a certain physique, be really attractive, really tall, and have a high status, like maybe he's a consultant in a hospital, maybe he's got a big business, whatever it is. If that's the top tier for the non-Muslims, what is it for the Muslims? What are the good Muslim women looking for in a man? Well, to be honest with you, they're just looking for three main things. They want stability, not meaning you have to be really rich, but you just have some level of stability where they feel like, okay, my father will no longer be taking care of me. Now this man looks like he can definitely take care of me. Simple as that. The second thing they're looking for is righteousness, taqwa, piety. Meaning you're somebody who seems like you fear Allah. You're going to be treating her well because you're following what Allah says. And you're going to raise the children well. You're going to be a good role model for the children. You're not going to transgress those barriers per se. And the third thing, of course, is character. And character is a bit of a wider thing. Part of it is personality that they want to feel compatible with you. And part of it are other things like you control your anger. You have good manners. You treat the elderly well. You treat her parents well. Your parents well, these kind of things. And of course, there's the other elements of romanticism and if you're funny, if you're not funny, these kind of things. So I would say these are the three main things that good Muslim women are looking for in a man.
They're not necessarily looking for someone with a six pack, someone who's really built. If you're a Muslim man who is quite built, how will they see that? You shouldn't be wearing tight clothes. You shouldn't be putting photos out there of you like shirtless and stuff like that. So they're not really going to see that like a non-Muslim woman might see. You can just imagine a non-Muslim woman flicking through Instagram and seeing certain men dressed in certain ways, trying to display their status in certain photos and videos. Us Muslim men, we're not really doing that stuff, or well, we shouldn't be anyway. So the point here is the definition of a top tier man when it comes to Muslims and non-Muslims is very different. And that's why we can't apply the same rule from non-Muslims onto Muslims. Good Muslim women are looking for a man with stability, that's religious and worships Allah and fears Allah. And he has good character and a personality that just matches what she's looking for. And now the third point of technology playing a big role in enabling all the women to find that top 3% of men and all go after him, it's just not true again. Because what good Muslim women are looking for is not something that you can see on an app, on Instagram or on Muzmatch or anything like that. They're looking for someone who is genuinely pious. Remember, a lot of women these days are actually scared of marriage. They're scared of what might happen because of all the stories of abuse that they've heard and that have been spread around. Some of them exaggerated, some of them not. But the point is, they're scared. And therefore, they really want to know that you have that character, that fear of Allah. That's really what they're thinking about. Because they're thinking of not dating, not being with someone who's going to bring them status. They're mainly thinking of comfort, safety, someone who's going to treat them well, someone who's going to raise their children well. That's what they're looking for. So if what good Muslim women are looking for can't be seen in a quick swiping kind of app, then how are they going to be picking people based on this technologically enabled 80-20 rule or 97-3 rule. It's not really possible. So unlike the brother that made this video, I don't believe that this 97-3 rule applies to Muslims whatsoever. I do believe that in order to improve your chances of getting accepted or whatever, you should develop yourself. And that's developing valuable skills that will get you paid in a job or in a business. You should be focused on giving charity, earning more and being more generous. You should focus on your relationship with Allah. How pious actually are you deep down? How is your sincerity? How is your worship? Are you praying the night? prayer? Do you pray the extra prayers? All of these things, you should be working on that. And there are other areas, of course, like your physical, not appearance, but your physical well-being, your health, and other general character traits like courage, like communication skills, and all of these areas. So ultimately, my feeling is that actually there are not many men out there who are genuinely pious, they have good character, they're not looking to take advantage of a woman. And those are things that women are looking for, good Muslim women are looking for. So if you just work on yourself, follow the things that Allah has encouraged you to follow anyway, develop your character, and you go out there and try your best to get married, then why should we be worried about this 97-3 rule or this asymmetric distribution? It's more just putting yourself out there, becoming a good person genuinely for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of marriage, and then trusting that Allah will bring someone to you who is good for you. And with that, I'll just say it's not as bad as you think. It's not as bad as a lot of the people out there are saying in terms of the drama and the sens sensationalization of, yeah, this is terrible. Women are like this these days. Women, are You just have to tie your camel and trust that Allah will bring you what's best for you. And with that, I'll say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. If you want more videos like this for Muslim men, then subscribe or check out the playlist over here. Assalamu Alaikum.